Now we have a few George Santos updates for you today because he's just soaking up that limelight right now. But first, let's get into a, one of the most popular stories of the last 24 hours. Just over 10 years since the release of its predecessor, the first trailer for a brand new title in the Grand Theft Auto series has dropped. Confirming a lot of speculation, leaving some questions unanswered, and capping off a long weekend of leaks of varying degrees of quality. Some merely video recordings of computer screens that were playing the trailer in an effort to subvert digital copyright protections. Rockstar Games appears to have finally said, screw it, and released the full quality trailer a day early in what appears to be a response to the just insurmountable amount of re-uploads on social media once the actual trailer made its way online. Yeah, the toothpaste is already out of the the thing that holds the toothpaste, as they say. Yeah, that's the quote that uh, has Can't been put the toothpaste so back in the toothpaste thing. Yeah. Over the weekend, however, a few uh, clips of the trailer started making their way online, and one in particular that blew up on TikTok was claimed to have been uploaded by the son of someone who works at Rockstar. And if that's true, uh, we'd hate to be in that kid's shoes after his parent is called into the boss's office for an emergency meeting. Although, I mean, the kid was probably telling all his friends at school, This like, is the one time that yeah, it actually worked. No, my dad works at Rockstar. Like, oh yeah, oh, sure. Okay, buddy. Sure, buddy. If, if that's true, why don't you leak the GTA 6 trailer? You know what? I will. Yeah. I, I refuse to be bullied. Do you believe me now? <laughs> yeah. But yeah, imagine having your entire career ruined because your dumb, snot-nosed kid is clout chasing on TikTok. Brutal. Mm -hmm. Still, it was not long before higher quality versions of the full trailer started appearing online. And despite it being next to impossible for someone to fake a trailer <laughs> of this magnitude, the leaks were confirmed in a way we've all grown accustomed to. Rockstar just started filing copyright takedown notices of the offending accounts with increased frequency as more and more people downloaded the files and re-uploaded it. So they quite literally threw their hands in the air and they just dropped it early on their official YouTube channel, tweeting, Our trailer has leaked, so please watch the real thing on YouTube. Which is also funny because they seemingly on purpose did not upload the trailer on X. Or Twitter. The Everything app. Mm -hmm. Which... Hurt Linda Yaccarino's feelings. I guess it it all doesn't happen on X because Rockstar clearly has proven that. It doesn't all happen on X. No, sometimes it happens on YouTube. She tweeted at Rockstar directly, begging, Gaming is one of our most popular topics. Drop that trailer here. Give the people on X what they want. Way to go, Linda. Hot dog. Obviously, we can't show you the trailer here for reasons that we've already explained. Plus, we know that our audience, you, have absolutely already watched yeah. it. Yeah, and at if least you a haven't, just go to YouTube.com. It'll probably be right there One at of the, the top first things. of the front page. But it appears as though revisiting Florida, or more specifically Miami, aka Vice City, it's the perfect location for Grand Theft Auto because nothing that happens in Florida is unbe unbelievable or unrealistic. I mean. Florida Man exists for a reason. There are plenty of stories to pull from. And with these graphics improvements, you're going to be able to prank all of your, your grandmas and aunties. Be yeah. like, that's the news. Look at what's happening on the news. An alligator went into a convenience store. Can you believe it? It is weird. Like, it's always weird when the current gen uh, releases of games come out. I'm like, this is, looks so realistic. Like, if I didn't have my glasses on <laughs> and was watching this on my phone, like, I'd be... I, and you, I didn't know it was a video game. Like, there's some shots in there. I'm like, that looks like it does look real life. Very good to the point where people online were like, "Oh, well, I'll wait to see gameplay." And I'm pretty sure this is gameplay ca captured cinematically. I mean, it's all it's in all in the engine, engine. Yeah. yeah. But uh, yeah, at this point, you can't tell me something didn't happen in Florida. I would believe you. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, based on the trailer, the game appears to be fully embracing Florida Man and its never-ending possibilities to the fullest. It literally looks like Florida Man the game, right down to the Tom Petty backing track. Hell yeah, Gainesville, baby. Mm -hmm. The trailer, it's filled with shots that define the state, its overindulgence, its city built on drug money, its extravagance, and also shows off at least two playable characters who appear at at least one point to be working together. Uh, the trailer also shows off social media style cuts that mimic Instagram or TikTok, and activities like mudding, street takeovers, boat racing, air boating, alligators on the loose, yeah. and so much more. And to your point, the, the clips that sh appear as though they are TikTok or Facebook 
uploads, those are the ones that look hyper realistic too, yeah. because of the filters that are built in to make it look like a social post. Mm -hmm. The old lady with just carrying around two hammers yeah. ready to smash you, <laughs> can't wait. Now, predictably, the game is scheduled for release all the way out in 2025, and using our very obvious but still well honed prediction skills, we'd venture to guess that 2025 actually means it will be released at the very end of 2025. Yeah, holiday 2025. If not later than that. So settle down because at best, you'll actually get to play this in fall of 2025. Earliest would probably be late September as that would match the release date of GTA 5, but 12 years later. Still, at the very least, you're going to have to wait a very long time. That's fine. I haven't even gotten around to playing Red Dead Redemption 2. You so. haven't? No, I've had it downloaded just on my computer for probably three years now. Yeah. And every time I'm just like, oh, God. Like, I, just these these 80-hour games. Like, uh, the, the only one I played this year was Starfield. And it just, like, by the end, I'm like, this is a fucking chore. I just want to be done. I do have to get in the groove and then not stop because that's when I forget about things. And it, the game, I just can't jump back into a game. But, yeah, Cyberpunk was that for me this year. I played straight through it. Uh, when you had COVID. Thank you for that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and uh, I did just play through, but it's only like eight or nine hours, but fantastic. Yeah. Uh, Robocop Rogue City. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it is uh, great. Yeah. I also just fired up Fallout again because of that new trailer. Fallout, Fallout 76? Oh, no, Fallout, Fallout 4. 4. Uh, yeah, the new trailer for the Fallout series dropped. Looks yeah, I'm uh, again like cautiously optimistic. There's no way this show is good, but they, they're they making me doubt myself. Yeah. But Walton I, Goggins... <laughs> Walton Goggins has a ghoul. Yeah. Perfect casting. Love it. Um, but I... Aesthetically looks fine. I just know it's going to suck. <laughs> I, I'm preparing myself mentally. Ye of little faith, who is always right. Like, there's just no way it's fucking good. Oh, since we're talking about pop culture really quick, I saw Godzilla Minus One. The, uh, is that the Japanese one? Yeah, it is fantastic. Yeah, I heard it's really good. Perfect movie. Go see it in the biggest way possible. Is, is the American Godzilla vs. Kong also out right now? No, but they just dropped the trailer for it. Oh, and okay. there's an American Godzilla this movie just like for so a show that's all on Apple TV. So much Godzilla happening. Yeah, all at once. And it wasn't, for whatever reason, marketed at me. I found out about all of this through word of mouth. The show on Apple TV is great, too. It's got uh, uh, Wyatt Russell playing his dad, Kurt Russell. Obviously, not he's not playing the character of Kurt Russell, but they play the same person. He just plays the young version. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Anyway, while we're on the topic of gaming, though, remember how for years everyone kept sounding the alarm regarding purchases vanishing from your digital libraries at the whims of publishers or the platforms themselves? It's an issue that pops up every once in a while when examples of this happen. Sometimes it's uh, the gaming space, sometimes it's movie and TV shows, but the end result is the same because it turns out, based on all that pesky fine print that no one ever reads you are essentially just sort of leasing these digital projects. Uh, and unless you own something physically, eh, you don't really own it. You mm. have a license. You have an NFT, yeah. a receipt for this. Uh, yeah, so the most recent example of this started making headlines uh, in the past week, and it, it should probably come as no surprise that this is the result of Warner Brothers Discovery yeah. desperately trying to figure out ways to make money. How do we make money? We haven't cracked the code. We can't figure out what kids like. We can't figure out what adults like. I, All we know is we got plenty of here, people popping up. Here's episodes. my budget. Half a billion dollars for me, David Zasloff, and then how do I fund these projects? Nobody else eating. Yeah, it seems like someone over at WBD realized that people had purchased digital versions of their shows and could watch them whenever they want without paying a monthly fee. And they simply could not let that slide. They're taking food out of my baby's mouth. So they're taking all that back. Yeah. Whoop. Uh, anyways, over on the official PlayStation website, Sony posted the following legal update notice, effectively telling their users that if they owned anything from Discovery Networks, no, they didn't. <laughs> As of December 31st, 2023, due to our content licensing arrangements with content providers, you will no longer be able to watch any of your previously purchased Discovery content, and the content will be removed from your video library. We sincerely thank you for your continued support. Thank you, PlayStation Store. Cool. So the page where this statement is located then provides an exhaustive list of every single title, season by season, that will be deleted from users' libraries by the end of the year. And while, personally, I don't care that someone is out there losing their ability to rewatch Here Comes Honey Boo Boo Season 3. No, I need it. This is just another clear-cut example of consumers not actually owning what they buy, 
unless you have the physical version of that media and also the proper equipment with which to watch it. Yeah, or maybe someday they'll do what they did to video games long ago, where the disc is really just a, a key to, to go on the internet it. and uh, download it from somewhere. Well, if you have a DVD player unconnected from the internet, I think that you'll DVD? Be... Shut up, Elliot, you're making me feel old. Digital video disc? Yeah, because Blu-ray... I... It's 480p, folks, look at that. I... It's like you're in the movie theater. I, I think Blu-ray does have like built-in connectivity stuff in, in at least some cases. What? No. I think so. That would be ridiculous. I don't know. Like if you were in like a cabin in the woods with no Wi-Fi, you wouldn't be able to watch a movie. Is that what you're saying? No, I think I, actually I think Blu-ray is fine for that. Yeah, but uh, I would, that would imagine be that, that if you are connected to the internet, they could be like, "Hey, you're not allowed to have this. So oh. just unplug it before you do anything." Okay. Yeah. Anyway, now it's time to go over all the developments regarding the recently expelled New York Congressman George Anthony Devolder Santos, punished George Santos who was kicked out of the Capitol for being too fabulous and serving too hard. Wait, sorry, I'm getting word that uh, he was kicked out because of the, you know, the felony counts that he's facing, as well as misuse of campaign funds on stuff like Botox and OnlyFans, things of that nature. Yeah, well, well he's just supporting small businesses, Elliot. Is there anything wrong with that? Yeah, uh, unlike his geriatric uh, former co-workers who simply hoard wealth, George Santos he gets money, he spends money. He's stimulating the economy. That's right. He's the only reason that we are not in a recession right now. Yep. Yep, everyone else doing insider trading, he's out there giving it back to the people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, nevertheless, if you're just now catching up, we do have two other videos that touch on the lead up to his expulsion and the many, many reasons why it all came to this. But uh, late last week, George Santos was kicked out of Congress. He had locks on his office door immediately swapped out so he couldn't steal anything or barricade himself inside and he was quoted leaving the capitol saying to hell with this place before starting to follow through on his scorched earth campaign against his former colleagues in a series of tweets here are a few examples but we should obviously add that you should you know take any of these accusations with a grain of salt the source is anthony devolder uh, George Anthony DeVolder Santos, who, um, you know, among many other things, he he does seem to be just a pathological liar. But he's also petty as hell, so... Yeah. <laughs> like, people are like, oh, I can't wait for him to, like, finally tell his side of the story. It's like, it won't matter. You no. can't trust anything this man says. No. <laughs> <laughs> what have we learned? Yeah. Nothing. Uh, let's talk about hypocrisy. Can someone ask Nicole Melio stock tips? When did she become a savant in stock trading? Monday, I will be filing an official complaint with the Office of Congressional Ethics against Nicole Maliotakis regarding her questionable stock trading since joining the Ways and Means Committee this Congress. Ooh. Before joining the committee, the congresswoman didn't have an active trading habit or a high volume stake. The question is, what set of information is she trading with? I mean, she's probably doing insider trading. I yeah, feel sure. like I, I would, I just assume they all are. Mm -hmm. On Monday, I will be filing an ethics complaint against Representative Mike Lawler for questionable campaign finance violations. Okay, George. <laughs> Congressman Lawler owns a portion of Checkmate Strategies, and he uses the same firm that he is a beneficiary of to pay for services related to his campaign. The concerning questions are, is Mr. Lawler engaging in laundering money from his campaign to his firm, then into his own pocket? George, this is one I would suggest maybe <laughs> staying with. This is this is a little too uh, well. He similar. would know. Yeah, yeah, I guess so. Yeah, a little too similar to your your own accusation. Yeah, but I mean, yeah, you I guess... can get a good look at a butcher by sticking your head up a bull's ass. If I'm going down, you're all going going down with me. Yeah. Uh, he then went on to target representatives Nick Lalota, Jamal Bowman, Dan Crenshaw, and more. The Dan Crenshaw one was uh, lobbed to him by Laura Loomer. Is he, uh, so he, he is he accusing Dan Crenshaw of having two working eyes? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The eye patch is just for show. It's fashion. Yeah. I should know. Uh, yeah, but he's also targeting many more. But outside of politics, his star is already shining bright, which, as we mentioned last week, can only shine for so long before Mr. Santos is behind bars, because despite being kicked out of Congress, he's still facing nearly two dozen federal charges. Currently, though, he's free to, he's free to kind of do what he pleases. And he is keeping busy. It's Rumspringa for George Santos. Mm -hmm. Over the weekend, it was announced that HBO Films greenlit a movie about Santos' life before and during and now presumably after his brief stint in U.S. politics. The film is being produced by the team behind shows like Veep and Succession. Oh my God. And will be based on a book that was recently released by author Mark Chiaswano titled The Fabulist. 
the lying, hustling, grifting, stealing, and very American legend of George Santos. And with a little bit more on this project, here's Deadline. Wait, there's already a fucking book? Yeah, it came out on the 28th. Well, that, you, but that's the you're going to need to go back and revise that book. It's yeah. missing uh, some important parts. Yes. Uh, this is always fascinating. People are like rushing to get the book out, and it's like, what are you doing? Well, I think that's part of the reason why so many of these Trump books have been, like, scheduled. Yeah. They're like, hey, if you need to get back to adding a couple more chapters, like, there's a Liz Cheney Trump book just came out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Yes, uh, first through the door, and gets a movie deal, I guess, probably based on this book. So you just add a little bit on the end yeah. there on a further, and then you sell it twice. You get the DLC yeah. for the book. Updated. Uh-huh. Here's Deadline. Written by Mike Makowski, writer producer of another HBO Emmy winner, Bad Education, the film tells the story of a seemingly minor local race that wound up a battle for the soul of Long Island and unexpectedly carved the path for the world's most famous and now disgraced congressman. It follows the Gatsby-esque journey of a man from nowhere who exploited the system, waged war on truth, and swindled one of the wealthiest districts in the country to achieve his American dream. Just like in that book, he uh, then ran someone over with his car. Did he? Great Gatsby? Oh, right. Spoilers. (laughs) Uh, So yeah, this obviously isn't going to be a project that makes Mr. Santos look good by any stretch of the imagination, but it does appear as though it will be a, a decent collection and investigation into his extensive lists of crimes, dishonesty, and deception. They better put that Mormon, or the, the Amish stuff in there. Yeah. If it doesn't include uh, the Amish stuff and him ripping off a war veteran. Yeah, stealing dogs. Mm-hmm. Outside of keeping his name elevated in national awareness and whatever monetary rewards he can parlay that into, this project in particular, it will not benefit Santos financially. As far as I know. I, I mean... I don't think it... Yeah, yeah. why would it? That would actually, any exchange of anything between Santos and this project would take away credibility from it. Yeah. Because he is, again, not a trustworthy person. No. But, yeah, he's not making money from this, which is why, immediately after his expulsion and the news of this HBO movie came out, uh, George Santos did something that everyone saw coming. He joined Cameo. Yep. For the low, low price of $200, you can get a personalized video directly from the disgraced former congressman, And that price was already raised from the starting price of just $75, which shows that there is a very high demand for a video from American superstar George Santos. And he is definitely banking on this. And look, we're not going to get our hopes up, but we actually submitted for a video produced by George Anthony DeVolder Santos on Monday afternoon. Yeah, no, and normally I wouldn't uh, exchange money with this man, but... Cameo handles all the credit card transactions. He does does not see any of that information. Yeah, uh, we made some pretty funny requests from him, so we're not sure if it'll get approved and created. And as of when we filmed this, uh, this episode, the request hadn't been filled. If for some reason we do get a video delivered to us in the middle of the night, which would be the funniest way. Hey boys. (laughs) It is 3 (laughs) a.m. What's up boys? Uh, If we do get that while I'm editing, I will add it right here. Um, I'm going to assume that it did yeah. not come through. He's uh, got, he's a busy boy. Yeah, I'm glad no one got their hopes up. But I do want to clarify, we did submit our request before the cutoff because he had gotten so many requests, he put a limit on the amount mm-hmm. that he would take currently. And we got ours in before that. So we might just have to wait a little bit longer. If we hear back, we'll let you know either way. But hopefully we have a Santos video in time for News Dump. The real, yeah. the real holiday present. Come on, George. And I did make please. a holiday request. Oh, good. I, I, I asked for him to talk about the war on Christmas and give us some of the hottest Capitol Hill goss. And I was like, you don't have to name names. Okay. Yeah. I'm excited. Yeah. This will be a true gift. True. Over in potentially substantial news that would actually be a positive mark in the legacy of George Santos, in response to his expulsion, one lawmaker introduced a bill that would stop members of Congress who have been expelled from receiving their pensions. Oh, come on. Axios has reported that Representative Zach Nunn, a Republican from Iowa, has announced the Congressional Pension Accountability Act. They point out that Nunn was one of the more than 100 Republicans who voted to expel Santos and quoted him saying the following to reporters. No one should be serving in Congress, be excommunicated and removed from Congress and still be able to draw a pension. Pension is earned for honorable service. Nunn continued, when you're removed from office, you should not be able to continue to cash in on the American taxpayer's dime. Wait, hold on. You can serve one term, one two-year term in Congress, and you get a lifetime pension? Is that what I'm understanding from this? No, they clarify, 
As Axios points out, Santos isn't even eligible for a pension because he served less than a year in office. Okay, yeah. So Now, at first, this feels like it would be a fine idea, but it could clearly be used as a weapon for government officials to use against each other when you consider that someone serving multiple years in Congress could have their retirement taken away from them because expulsion has been weaponized. Now that the precedent has been set because of George Santos, uh, that's on the table, just like it, how every president going forward is going to get impeached. Yeah, no, I mean, like, we, we joke around, but I, I do genuinely think this is bad. This sets a very bad precedent, and it yep. will be weaponized in every uh, congressional term from now until the inevitable collapse of this country. And the end of the world. Yeah. If used properly, this is, this is agreeable. I think that if, if someone commits a, a crime bad enough to get them expelled from Congress, they shouldn't get a pension. But... I can definitely see this using to motivate people to vote certain ways or threaten people or any other they reason are, like that. Uh, they are literally like, as we, I don't know if it might have even happened already, but they're just literally trying to pass a bill that will probably, probably will be passed. It's like literally says that criticism of Israel is, is anti-Semitic. anti-Semitic. Yeah. So do you Ooh. not see how th- there's only a few steps between that and someone like Rashida Tlaib being expelled for being so anti-Semitic, even though it, it, she's just critical of how Israel is yeah, slaughtering the, people. The country that literally, like, like ethnically cleansed her own family. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's just uh, uh, it's a recipe for the country who is now giving fuckery. battleship coordinates. Uh, telling people to move to different zones like it's a game of Battle Royale. Yeah, it, it's... They are literally doing like a PUBG. They're like, it's uh, like... <laughs> we're going to bomb this section here, so you should probably move to this section here. Right. It's... Uh, it's horrific. Musical chairs. And if you if you miss your chair, your, uh, ho- your house gets destroyed. Yeah, and your, your entire family tree is wiped out. Yeah. Uh, anyways, yes. Again, this act is one of... It, it seems good in theory if it's properly used. I think we can all agree on that. But as we've seen... Sometimes members of our government are far more concerned with fighting each other than they are serving the American people. And this bill also follows a similar pitch from earlier this year that would, according to Politico, quote, prevent members convicted of certain offenses from then profiting off book deals, speech commissions, television shows, and more. See, that's good because that, the, the, the key word there is convicted. Yes. Which, like, I mean, again, I mean, I understand why they wanted George Santos out, but it's like, Give it like three, four months. He would have been convicted, and they, this co- could have all been done by the book, mm-hmm. according to the original precedent. And we all had a lot of fun along the way. Yeah, yeah. we did. We, I mean, honestly, character of the year. And and like you pointed out, I think that you had the the most brilliant take on all of this. While he was serving in Congress, he was probably committing less crimes than he ever had. Yeah, no, I I firmly uh, I believe in uh, restorative <laughs> justice, and um, I mean I think nonviolent criminals in a lot of cases. If you just give them a purpose, you give them a, a role, like a, some yeah. responsibility, they, uh, you know, they're a lot less likely to reoffend. And this is the perfect. Uh, now he's case got study. nothing to do but grift. Exactly. He's all, the, what do you think this cameo is? I mean, it's just the legal grift. Yeah. But uh, mm-hmm. I mean, what else is he up to? Well, we do have more news for you in just a second. But first, we're going to thank, uh, take a moment to thank today's sponsor for not only sponsoring our show but coming in clutch on my ever increasing runs. I cracked. 80 miles ran last month. Jesus Christ. Yeah. And before... We're running to Mexico. <laughs> and before or after each run, I would make sure to pour a serving of liquid IV into my water to maximize my hydration. Liquid IV comes in handy for many other reasons, too. Maybe you're out there, you know, testing your endurance, doing a lot of holiday shopping. <laughs> I, I, like, I, seriously, have you been to a couple stores in one day? It is annoying Tiring. Yeah. People are screaming, running around. The air is very dry. Uh, or you're, you know, traveling back and forth between family stuff, hosting a big family gathering. We all know how annoying that is. Or just recovering from the annual Christmas party. They do overserve at a lot of those business Christmas parties. A lot of times to get you to forget of, uh, about all the layoffs they just did. Yeah, and what what happened to your guacamole bowl? <laughs> yeah. And whatever reason that you need for extra hydration, vitamins, and nutrients, Liquid IV has you covered. With three times the electrolytes of the leading sports drink, plus eight vitamins and nutrients for everyday wellness, Liquid IV hydrates two times faster than water alone, all in a single stick. And now it's available in sugar-free in three delicious flavors, white peach, green grape, and lemon lime. My favorite is uh, the white peach. I think it's the tastiest, and I love it very much. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's a, you know, 
White peach. Mmm. Mmm, that's a tasted Georgia peach. Delicious. Oh, gosh. Yeah. One stick of liquid IV in 16 ounces of water hydrates better than water alone, with three times the electrolytes of the leading sports drink. No artificial sweeteners and zero sugar. It also contains eight vitamins and nutrients for everyday wellness and is non-GMO and free from gluten, dairy, and soy. Whether you're, you're using it to recover from physical activities, celebrating a bit too much, or whatever reason you may have, you can grab your liquid IV hydration multiplier sugar-free in bulk nationwide at Costco or you can do the smart thing, save 20%, get 20% off when you go to liquidiv.com and use our code today daily, all one word at checkout. That's 20% off anything you order when you shop better hydration today using promo code today daily at liquidiv.com. Get hydrated. All right, back to the news now, and we should probably start with an emergency update to the status of word of the year because a new challenger has appeared thanks to the Oxford Dictionary. The, There's a the war fancy, going on. The fancy cousin of uh, Ooh, the Merriam-Webster. We've got a different word for you. Yeah. Oh, oh, the Merriam-Webster Dictionary has a word of the year. Do they now? Do they? Well, to be fair, Oxford, they went with the, the better choice. I think Merriam-Webster's was trying to seem a little up their own ass by refusing to give this word the glory it deserved. Oxford, they threw caution to the wind. Good. Well, despite popping up as an honorable mention in the Merriam-Webster dictionary list behind their word of the year, authentic, Oxford has thrown caution to the wind and placed the crown on the word that deserved it the most. Riz! <laughs> Riz. This was apparently after a much more democratic process, which included more than 32,000 total votes on various significant words that have been elevated into our lexicon this year. Notably, the Oxford announcement doesn't include a mention of the Twitch streamer who popularized and allegedly coined the term, Kai Sinat. But that might be because his definition of the term doesn't really seem to match up with the widely interpreted meaning. Charisma. Yeah. That, he says that that's not what it is. I'm very confused by it that. It seems almost like... He doesn't want it to mean that because he wants it to mean something that he came up with, but okay. also doesn't have an answer for that, too. I'm not denying he didn't popularize it. Yeah, he should uh, get the credit, for, I guess, yeah. for popularizing it. But regardless of its usage before it blew up, it quite literally means charisma. Uh -huh. Sorry, Kai. Anyway, let's take a quick look at Oxford's official Word of the Year post so we can all feel old and out of touch together. 2023 marked the era of personal and professional PR. And what does it take to command attention? A whole lot of charisma, or the shortened form, riz. Pertaining to someone's ability to attract another person through style, charm, or attractiveness, the term is from the middle part of the word charisma, which is an unusual word formation pattern. Other examples include fridge, refrigerator, and flu, influenza. Use of the word as recorded in our corpus has increased dramatically in 2023, with a peak in June 2023 when actor Tom Holland was asked in a widely reported interview about his riz, to which he answered, I have no riz whatsoever. I have limited riz. Oh, come on, Tom. And then they threw in a little trivia. Did you know the word riz can also be used as a verb, <laughs> often in the phrase riz up, which means to attract, seduce, or chat up a person. Example sentence. Uh, Livy rizzed up <laughs> baby, baby Gronk. Gronk. Yeah. Is Baby Gronk the new drip king? I do find it offensive that they, uh, I mean, clearly they have the data, but uh, said that Tom Holland, popularize this word when clearly Kai Sinat, uh, the most popular streamer on Twitch. I don't care either way. Mm -hmm. Much like with Merriam-Webster's word list, Oxford has included all of their honorable mentions for the year, including terms like prompt, as it relates to artificial intelligence, situationship. <laughs> that, that, that's a fun one. Yeah. Uh, Swifty, beige flag. What? Beige flag is like, it's not quite a red flag for a relationship or a friend or whatever but they're just kind of boring in mid. Okay. Yeah. Uh, De-influencing, heat dome, and parasocial. Mm -hmm. All kind of unsettling terms for different reasons, especially heat dome. Yeah, that's not uh, a fun one. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's a randomly not really a word anyone needed to know until recently. Yeah, heat dome, uh, new 2023 word that you're going to be hearing for yeah, a very long time. Your kids are going to hate it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You weren't ready for that, but your kids are going to fucking hate you for it. Yep. If you're curious about uh, the process, though, or, or more of the info that their blog has provided about the rest of these terms, check out their official blog post by heading down to the link in the description. Links to all of the stories we've covered today are down there as well. And speaking of updates, though, our favorite government agency has gone viral yet again. Mm -hmm. After commenting on a disturbing trend that makes absolutely no sense unless you're manufacturing the product with the sole intention of electrocuting people. Folks, 
It's the infamous mail-to-mail -mail extension cord. We, it's, it's almost as popular as the orcas on this channel. Better known to some people as the suicide cord. Yeah, and it's pretty risky for us to even show you this device on YouTube. Uh, but since the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission is talking about it in a brief but critical way, you should probably be aware that not only does it apparently exist, but at least one major retailer is still stocking the item on their website. To be completely clear, they're, they're definitely responsible for it being available on their website, but this is almost certainly a mistake that they weren't aware of because nearly every online retailer has opened up their storefronts to hosting products from drop shippers and distributors that they would never use to stock their actual shelves. Amazon is obviously most famous for this. They were the trailblazer. Yeah. But with much less attention, big box stores have also turned to independent sellers to fill out their online stores with a never-ending supply of products. So as much as we do dislike Walmart, we have to at least assume that they personally didn't approve of a device that only exists to electrocute you or destroy your home. Because that would lose customers. It would. Yeah. It's bad for business. <laughs> Electrocuting your customers is bad for business. <laughs> Turns out uh, we lost, I don't know, 20, 30, 40 years of business because we sold them this one cheap <laughs> cord. But hey, maybe they did do it on purpose. Who knows? Yeah. As of when we filmed this, they had not taken the product down. So they're, at the very least, complicit. Yeah. Either way, Twitter user Bubblegum Octopus pointed out the fact that Walmart appeared to be selling what they described as the instant death cable and included screenshots of the product. It seemed unbelievable, so we looked up the product name on their website, and sure enough, there it was. <laughs> and as we assumed, it is a product that is being fulfilled by some random company. This one is uh, it's called... Uh, Chuang Chi Zhi Technology Company Limited. And it posts their vast array of products directly to the Walmart storefront. Lucky for everyone looking to electrocute themselves. Uh -huh. And luckily, what appears to be a brave Walmart associate stands out as the lone reply <laughs> uh, review of this product <laughs> in particular. Yeah. Uh, posted just a few short days ago and pleading for people not to buy it. Here it says on next to his name, it says Robert, Walmart associate. Yeah. So... Maybe Robert somewhere at some Walmart is tr is trying so hard to run this up the flagpole, but yeah. so far no one's noticed. But he's well, out here doing the work. Well, thank you, Robert. Yeah. Here's Robert's one-star review. Do not buy this. Do not ever try to make this. It is a hazard. If it doesn't kill you, it will certainly hurt you. Never, ever, ever make or buy a mail-to-mail -mail adapter. If you think you might need one, you don't. If you know you need one, you're wrong. <laughs> There is a correct way to do what it is trying to be done, and it's not this. Now, before the Twitter post about Walmart went viral, the U.S. Consumer Product Safety Commission acknowledged the product's existence and asked the public not to use it, saying, Reminder that if you're out there looking for a mail-to-mail -mail extension cord, don't do that. Why not, Consumer Product Safety Commission? One, they're unnecessary. Two, you'll electrocute yourself, kid. If you see a mail-to-mail -mail extension cord for sale, please email the link to info at cpsc.gov. And since the Walmart post went viral after the CPSC post, we're going to assume that they've been inundated with links to the Walmart post, but just in case, we went ahead and submitted it as well. You know what they really need to do is they need to make a video with some mannequins showing what happens. Yeah. That's the only way that the know. American consumer is going to learn. Actually, I don't know. Mannequins wouldn't work. They're going to have to do some Thomas Edison shit and bring an elephant and... <laughs> Just a, a noble, uh, beautiful elephant yeah. borrowed from the zoo and uh, hand it this mail to mail cord. See, like, see? See what happens? This, this elephant could, is dead. This could be you and your family. <laughs> also, we filmed this on a new piece of technology called the motion picture yeah. camera. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyways, moving on though, speaking of animals, animals do continue to fight back against very stupid humans doing very stupid human shit. And just before Thanksgiving of this year, uh, this guy was not thankful for what happened. A Utah man found out the hard way that you should enjoy animals from a safe distance without disturbing them or their natural habitat. Yeah, obviously. Uh, according to local outlet KUTV, a man named Halen Carbajal was gored by a bison. Uh, here's from their reporting, which at the very least points out the smallest bit of self-reflection from the victim of the attack. Halen Carbajal said he and his girlfriend were on their way up from southern Utah after enjoying an early Thanksgiving in a family cabin. They noticed some domestic bison on a neighbor's property. I was definitely an idiot in this scenario. I crossed through the fence. I started walking back near the fence. By the time I got back to the fence, he had followed me all the way over. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool, Carbajal said. I, I kind of did want to pet him, 
So I was just being naive about the whole thing. So I did that, and yeah, he just rocked me pretty good. It blows my mind that this happens so often. Like, just looking at the damn thing, they're massive. Yes. Like, would you have, it's literally like walking up to one of those rodeo bulls. Yeah. And be like, do you want to be my friend? It's like The problem is these are too, they're too fluffy. F fluff in just your normal lizard brain yeah. is like a sign of uh, something comfy, lovey, that you want to give a mistake. hug to. Yeah. Uh, they also add that the bison gored Carbajal in the stomach and he was eventually airlifted to Utah Valley Hospital. Carbajal is now recovering at home. He suffered a liver laceration, a broken rib, and a bruised lung. It was for sure a reality check or recognizing my naivety and thinking it would be fine to try and touch one and just realizing that you got to have a lot more reverence for big crazy beasts like that, <laughs> Carbajal said. You have to have a lot more reverence for big crazy beasts like that, you know? You have to have a lot more reverence. <laughs> There's admiration, and then there's a level of respect you have to have with just keeping your distance. <laughs> okay, at least he learned his lesson. Yeah. It is crazy that he had to figure this all out by actually getting gored by a bison. Could have, like, fucking died, you idiot. But, yeah. hey, at least he learned the lesson. I do love in his first quote, he's like, yeah, he, he got me pretty good. Yeah, it's, uh, he did get you good. Yeah, it's, and then it, it goes on to say, like, oh, it lacerated his liver, and he had to be airlifted. Yeah. Nah, he got I me I wonder if good. he got tossed, too. They, Maybe they like tossing. Uh, yeah, if you're if you're a woman trying to uh, get near a bison, they will hook you in the belt loop and throw you through the air, as yeah. we've seen multiple times before in national parks. It's just crazy, like wild animals. It's just clearly a lesson that a huge chunk of the population never absorbed. Just like you have domestic animals, pets, farm animals, and such, and then you have wild animals. Yeah, I and think a, a big thing. A big reason is that a lot of people just learn what they don't learn by actually studying animals or in school. They learn by just going to the zoo and looking at them. And those animals are, it's not a great representation of how uh, animals act in yeah, the wild. They're... <laughs> Whereas realistically, I know it's not possible for many people, but realistically you should probably go to wherever your closest national park is. And there are ranger programs there and people who work within that space that are more than happy. To educate you about how you should act around those animals you that are native you to your area. Literally, just Google: Is it safe to get really close well, to wild animals? Well, you can't trust anymore because an AI is going to try to get you killed. Oh, actually, it's so safe. You should yeah. walk right up to it and they're, pat it on the head. They're big and fluffy, which means they love to be pet. That's a sign. Uh huh. Uh, anyway, finally today, in a surprising update to the war on Christmas this year, uh, not sure how this one snuck by us, but apparently Sean Hannity dropped his own Christmas movie last month. And uh, it sounds absolutely awful. Yeah. I know. I'm shocked, too. We aren't patriots who are brave enough to spend $20 to watch this garbage, but the, the people who have seen Jingle Smells, yes, that is the real title, mm -hmm. say it's as bad as the synopsis makes it out to be. From the film's official website, premiering exclusively on Rumble, <laughs> Jingle Smells is the first feature film, non-documentary, to debut on the platform. The film features war vet Nick Gutman, Ben Davies, who is forced to take a job with his dad's, John Schneider's, quirky garbage men buddies who are hired to conduct a wild secret mission, destroying perfectly good toys by Christmas Eve. These popular toys were pulled from the shelf after the film star, James Storm, they are based on, is canceled for his patriotic views. Instead of destroying them, Nick takes on the secret identity, Jingle Smells, and becomes a Robin Hood of the holidays. What the fuck? Yeah, so the character that it's the toys are based on gets canceled for being way too patriotic. For loving his country too much. Exactly. Uh, and then so the woke media, and I'm assuming the, the leftist mob, demands that everyone needs to go and smash these toys and rob people's houses, <laughs> make sure that kids aren't getting them. Okay. And so this guy, who's a garbage man, is like, no, I'm going to literally save Christmas. Wait, so is, is Sean Hannity in the movie? He produced it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, quote, we're breaking away from mainstream Hollywood and doing something totally different, says Sean Hannity. Jingle Smells is an hilarious and heartwarming story filled with a great message and void of all the crazy agendas being presented by those <laughs> other entertainment platforms. Jingle Smells is a movie that your entire family can enjoy together this Christmas season. Agenda free, huh? No Here. agenda at all. <laughs> no agenda detected. 
there's also that that Daily Wire uh, movie uh, where they had to play all the characters themselves because they wouldn't because no actors would take the gig. Did you see that? Um, I mean, I assumed as much yeah. based on yeah, Lady Ballers. Ben Shapiro, he's straight up, he's like, yeah, we first wanted to make a documentary, but like, you know, undercover, but uh, turns out they, you know, they don't actually, this doesn't actually happen in real life. This thing that we've been uh, harping on for years doesn't, it's not real. Yeah, so we had like to make people, it up. So yeah, so we just and made also, it up. And also, no actor worth uh, anything would take a role in this film, so it, it stars like Matt Walsh and stuff. Yeah. Stars Matt Walsh and uh, Jeremy Boring. The like, it's it's all it's just so funny. Everyone involved in the Daily Wire, Louder with Crowder, like they're all just failed entertainers. But now they get to flex their creative muscle because of uh, reasons. Actually, like Jeremy Boring, apparently, like was pretty good at being a, a film producer. But again, clearly, he wanted to be in front of the camera, mm-hmm. and it ate it ate away at him. So he's like, you know what? I'm going to make my own movie starring me, Jeremy Boring. (laughs) And we're going to, Ben, you're going to play a referee for some reason. And I love making the rules. Matt Walsh, you're going to be in it too. As a baby wearing a diaper. Yeah. Yeah. And he just filled that diaper. Jingle smells, folks. Uh, P.U. Two separate movies. Uh, but probably both on they no, exist one's, at, one's exclusively on Daily Wire with their exclusive. But they like, exist in the same cinematic universe, the right wing cinematic universe. <laughs> and it is only expanding. Uh-huh. If you thought the Hallmark Christmas movies weren't conservative enough, well, get ready. Anyways, if you want uh, more George Santos news than you can shake a stick at, we've got a recent episode of Weekly Weird News. We cover other stuff as well. And then News Dump, which has a bunch of very funny clips from the lead up to his expulsion. Where uh, he was like, go ahead and try it. Yeah, he dared him. So we have those up there, but please make sure you like the video, click the subscribe button, do whatever you want, leave a comment, reply to a comment, and we'll see you soon for some tech news. Bye-bye. Bye.